with a student, Manu, we talked about ribosomes, and I was trying to build a ribosome um, that worked on fluids so that I could place the little parts we're talking about. And we it kept failing because bubbles would come into our system and the bubbles would make the whole thing stop working. Mm -hmm. And we spent about half a year trying to get rid of the bubbles. Um, then Manu said, wait a minute, the bubbles are actually better than what we're doing. We should just use the bubbles. And so we invented how to do universal object with little logic with little bubbles and fluid. Okay, that, you that, have to you have to explain this microfluidic bubble logic, please. How does this work? So <laughs> yeah, that's super interesting. Yeah, and so well, so I'll come back and explain it. But what it sure. led to was um, we showed fluids could do. Um, it, it'd been known fluid could do logic, like your old automobile transition transmissions do logic, mm -hmm. but that's macroscopic. It didn't work at little scales. We showed with these bubbles we could do it at little scales. That then I'm going to come back and explain it. But what came out of that is Manu then showed you could make a 50 cent microscope using little bubbles. Mm -hmm. And then um, the techniques we developed are what we use to transplant genomes to make synthetic life. All came out of the failure of trying to make a, the genome, the, 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 the ribosome. Now, so the way the bubble logic works is um, in a little cha channel, uh, fluid at small scales is fairly viscous. It's sort of like pushing jello, think of it as. Um, if a bubble gets stuck, mm -hmm. the fluid has to detour around it. Mm -hmm. So now imagine a, a channel that has two wells and one bubble. If the bubble is in one well, the fluid has to go in the other channel. If the fluid is in the other well, it has to go in the first channel. Mm -hmm. So the 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 position of the bubble can switch. It's a switch. It can switch the fluid between two channels. So now we have one element, a switch. And it's also a memory because you can detect whether or not a bu bubble is stored there. Then if two bubbles meet, um, it, it, if you have two channels crossing, a bubble can go through one way or a bubble can go through the other way. But if two bubbles come together, then they push on each other and one goes one way and one goes the other way. Mm -hmm. That's a logic operation. Mm -hmm. That's a logic gate. So we now have a switch, we have a memory, and we have a logic gate, and that's everything you need to make a universal computer. I mean, the fact that you did that with bubbles in microfluid, just kind of brilliant. Well, you know? so to, I mean, to stay with that example, uh, what we proposed to do was to make a fluidic ribosome and the project crashed and burned. It was a disaster. Um, this is what came out of it. And so it was precisely ready, fire, aim in that we had to do a lot of homework to be able to make these microfluidic systems. The, the fire part was we didn't think too hard about making the ribosome. We just tried to do it. Mm -hmm. The aim oh. part was we realized the ribosome failed, but something better had happened. And if you look all across research funding, research management, it doesn't anticipate this. So fail fast is familiar, mm -hmm. but fail fast tends to miss ready and aim. You, you can't just fail. You have to do your homework before the fail part, and you have to do the aim part after the fail part. And so the whole language of research is about like milestones and deliverables. That works when you're going down a straight line. <laughs> but it doesn't work for this kind of discovery. And to leap to something you said that's really important is I view part of what the Fab Lab Network is doing is giving more people the opportunity to fail. Mm -hmm. 